So this college and career center was actually the largest center of its kind in the state, all right? Um, and it had all kinds of um, uh, notable achievements um, as a center um, in trying to um, move young people onto a college-going pathway as well as a pathway that could yield, uh, that could lead to a productive career. Um, and when I first sat down with him, I was checking in with him, I'd gotten to know him for a couple of years, and then we sat down in the fall of 2014, and he showed me two texts on his phone. Um, one was from a uh, uh, an African, uh, Asian American female student who was standing in front of the admissions office at Carleton College and the text read, I'm here, the head of financial aid knew me by name, I've made it this far because of you. Uh, another from an Asian American female student who was standing in front of the main hall at Brown University, her text read, quote, thanks for getting me here, I couldn't have done it without you. So this person seemed to have a very strong influence on the trajectories of these young people. Um, and they did this in a couple of ways. They had a comprehensive career uh, and college curriculum for all students in the school. They called this their comprehensive uh, uh, curriculum. He also had a study group taking a, roughly the, the top eight to 10 students in a class and they would sign up for this with him and trying to improve their chances of being admitted to selective colleges and receiving um, substantial financial aid packages from selective colleges. That was called study group. But then he also was just kind of on call for students um, in helping them put together their essays and their college admissions <coughs> applications. Um, and a lot of that could stretch through the December holidays into January. And he spent a huge amount of time in his office in the school over the December holidays, um, often with students, including uh, graduates of the school that perhaps needed to transfer from a college that hadn't worked out very well. So this person had an extraordinary commitment to these young people and I really wanted to understand um, where his commitment came from, his beliefs about students and how he was able to get their attention and have such a strong impact on them. And so a few things that I learned um, these are quotes from Sam Fitzpatrick, the director of the College Career Center. Um, he was very concerned about the criticism and the negativity uh, in these young people's lives, right? And so he said that what he'd really like to do is try to be able to reprogram young people's thinkings, thinking about their futures. Um, when a student has something go their way, they're just expecting it to be taken away, all right? Uh, and this can get in the way of their outcomes. And then he said, and this term came up several times, I'm trying to develop ways that can help begin or maintain winning streaks, all right? So hang on to that, uh, that term, winning streaks, because we're gonna get into that in just a minute. But I do want to just share a couple of things that he said, that, uh, that he did, and that he said he was concerned with um, in terms of emphasizing in his classes. And one of the, um, one of the things that I noticed when I went, first went to one of his large comprehensive classes, um, that even this, this was classes of about 30 uh, freshmen that were rotating through uh, the College and Career Center. They're all sitting at computer terminals. They use Naviance. Some of you might have heard of Naviance. And I go in, and this guy, Mr. Fitzpatrick, he's a very tall white guy. He used to play uh, basketball. He's from California. And he's, this is how he's teaching, okay? He's standing on a chair, all right? And there are students in front of him, all right? And he said, he explained to me, that what he's really interested in is bang for the buck, right? He's interested in getting students' attention. This is one of the ways that he gets students' attention, all right? And one of the things that he did, um, this was actually with the seniors, is he would have a bowl uh, filled with um, all kinds of things, uh, office supplies, erasers, um, pen, pencil sharpeners, um, pencils, pens, all right? He would have this bowl, and he would take this bowl, a whole bunch of students in the auditorium, this is a, another larger group, take the bowl, and he would throw everything in the air, all right? And they would land throughout the crowd, all right? And then he'd say, did any of you catch anything? Did any of you catch everything that was in the bowl? You didn't, did you, right? He said, that's going to be your problem if you don't get started now on your college applications. There is going to be too much for you to catch. There's going to be too much for you to take account of, all right? So that's why you have to listen carefully to us when we're trying to guide you in this process. 
Another thing that he did um, with ninth graders that I thought was especially important was he would talk to them about um, skills that they had. All right, and he said, I'm always trying to find ways to, to hook people in. And he would say to these ninth graders, imagine we're a group of ninth graders in a class, maybe 30 ninth graders, he would say, what are you good at? What are you good at? And he would find that rarely would anyone say anything. All right, but then he would prompt them. All right, and he'd say, um, how many of you speak another language? Well, and then some hands start to go up. All right, he'd say, how many of you know how to take care of other people? Like older relatives or younger siblings? More hands go up, right? Um, how many of you know computer programs or software? More hands go up. So he seemed to be taking some of the responsibilities of some of these uh, lower income students um, on the east side um, and helping them to imagine that they're actually marketable skills, right? Um, and this is part of what I think is going on here as far as helping them to imagine uh, future selves with marketable value, all right? When I heard that term winning streaks, okay, when he says that I'm in the business of trying to um, get young people to start and maintain winning streaks, so I think there's something about feeling like a winner that's very important to developing a sense of, the sense of confidence that um, is likely a part of neoliberal agency, right? So that's where that takes me.